She's an award-winning YouTuber and best-selling author obsessed with helping you go after the life you want. I like it. Join her as she seeks out the stories and strategies. Give me every little detail. Of extraordinary people who found success. I'm going to get emotional. Oh, my God. Welcome to Detail Therapy with Amy Landino. Life's all about sacrifices. I say this all the time. And it's one of my biggest things. Short-term sacrifices equal long-term gains. That's something I just say to people. I've said it for a really long time. I don't believe anybody, like I picked it up from anyone. It's just the way I've lived my life is with, if you want to have money, like people are like, how do you afford this trip? And it's like, well, I spent years saving and I forced myself to live without that money in the moment. So four years from now, I can live with that money. Hey there, welcome to Detail Therapy. You just heard a snippet from my chat with Kyle and McKenna Gott, road tripping YouTubers who stopped through Columbus to chat with me. In this episode, you'll hear the Gotts talk about how they met and fell in love through YouTube and within nine days of meeting in person for the first time, got engaged and married, why they're on a road trip now and how they're making it happen while working and documenting their journey on YouTube. I mean... Wi-Fi. That is my biggest question here. Six months of searching for Wi-Fi. So we have a lot to get into with the gods today. But for those of you who are new to the show, my name is Amy Landino and I will be your host. I'm a YouTube creator, professional speaker, best-selling author, and entrepreneur. I am here to help you go after the life you want. You can find out more details about me by visiting youtube.com slash amytv. Before we get into it today, you know, it's really important that I get to know you better. I tell you about myself all the time. I tell you about other people all the time. But it's important that we continue to build our relationship, and that means I got to know the details about you. And so I need you to do me a really big favor. Now that we're, you know, more than 10 episodes in, we're on episode 11 here, I would love some information to tell me what you're like. And that's just a quick survey. You may have heard Meg talk about this in a previous episode as well, but I need some more info. I know there's a few more out there of you who have not done this, and it's really, really quick. Just some basic details about you and, you know, just like what what your life is like. Are you married? You know, how old are you? These are things that make sure that I know I'm talking to the people I think I'm talking to. So if you could please go to amylandino.com slash detail therapy survey. That's amylandino.com slash detail therapy survey. I, of course, have it linked in the show notes as well. If you could just fill that out for me, it's a favor to me, but I appreciate your time so much. And it really does help me make sure that this content is on point for our future because we're going to be around for a while. And I need you to help me make sure that it's the best of the best of the best. Okay, as it pertains to this interview today, I do want to say it's a little different than usual, but actually, as much as I want to say that, I feel like every episode of this podcast is a little different than I anticipated, so not going to lie. And I know I'm doing two YouTube episodes back to back here, so hang with me. This one I wanted to share for a very particular reason. You know, last week we talked more about YouTube tips. This is very much taking a chance on life. And I think that's a lot of going after the life that you want. I think the gods do an incredible job of doing that for themselves. So that's what we're talking about today. And that's a lot of what we're discussing. Now, when we get into some therapy here, we're going to hear, you know, what are some better practices that the gods can be making on their road trip? Because right now it's all about surviving, right? But I do want you to listen really closely to what they have to teach you about taking a chance, whether it's falling in love and going after that person, even though it doesn't make sense to the rest of the world, or taking a road trip and leaving the city you own a home in because it's something you've always dreamed of. Their story is spectacular, and I think it's really going to warm your heart today. So that's coming up in just a second. Before we get to that, of course, we have to do our shout out to somebody who left a review for this podcast because that means the world to me. And so I have to share it with you. Big shout out to Asha Ahmed for their five star, thank you, five star review of this podcast. And it's very simple. Asha said, finally, a podcast. But thank you so much, Asha. I appreciate that. Very quick, very easy to understand. I love a good uh, quick read in the review process. So shout out to you. Thank you so much. Tweet me if you hear this because I would love to make a face and the name connect. 
Remember that everything we're going to talk about here today on the show can be found in our show notes website. That's detailspodcast.com. So if you hear the gots talk about something that they recommend, whether it's how they built a bed in their back seat, or if they loved one of my videos that motivated them, I will link to everything that's in the show notes. So remember to go check out those details. With that, let's get into my chat with my next guests. Today, I'm sitting down with Kyle and McKenna Gott, known on YouTube as Gott Love. The married couple met through their passion for online video and fell in love from a distance. They're now happily married for four years and on a road trip of a lifetime. Now that Kyle is no longer in the Air Force, they are touring the country for six months with nothing but their vlogging gear and a really big truck with a bed in it. The Gots join me in Columbus today, so let's hop over to my chat with them right now. McKenna and Kyle got in the house. Thank you for being here. Thank, Thank you, you so us. much for having us. So oh my excited. God. I'm really glad you're here. First and foremost, I just want to give a, a shameless plug because this is the first interview that I'm doing in Skyfall Studios, which is headquarters for our video production house, Aftermark in Columbus, Ohio. So the fact that you're here makes me super pumped makes right us now. It's so, yeah, really special. special and it looks <laughs> awesome in here. It's really intimate. The guys like to set the lights up just right. It's awesome. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you're in Columbus. You're on a six month. U.S. road trip. Yes. yes. Why? <laughs> First of all, why not? <laughs> Both of us have a love for travel, and Kyle has been in the Air Force for the past six years. We just finished up a six-year enlistment, and we decided when he gets out that we're just going to take off and see the world a little bit it's more. It's amazing. So I actually have a map from 2010 in college, a plan to drop out of college, and this is almost this identical road trip. But really? I didn't realize how identical it was until after we planned this trip out. And then I was like, pretty sure the other one that I'd done in 2010. So in 2010, I wanted to buy a bus, live with two friends out of that, drop out of college. They both were like, no, one of them got a job. The other one's like, I'm broke. So that's why I joined the military. I dropped out of college, joined the military because I wanted to travel. Oh. So I've always wanted to travel. So this road trip kind of stems from a dream that was eight years ago. Okay. And you're not in the military, McKenna. Correct. Okay. So I how did you guys meet? <laughs> we Get ready. actually met from YouTube. So oh, that's my on. favorite. So Go ahead. On. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> I am from small town, southern Ohio. Uh, didn't ever really watch YouTube or anything like that. Which is so funny. Um, we talked about this before we started recording. And your family is very close to where my yes, mother's family lives, which I never so thought in a million crazy. years I'd meet somebody that I've was never from met anyone that actually knows where I that's live. That's awesome. So that is. Really yeah, she was insane. about to show it to me on a map. I'm like, you're talking about South Point, Ohio, right? And, and I'm like, oh yeah, my that's God. basically where I'm from. <laughs> so I was going to join the military. And that's how this all started. Um, I decided, well, if I'm already talking to a recruiter, I may as well look up videos. Looked up videos and I found Kyle's videos. Oh, wow. So I messaged him on Facebook just to be like, hey, your videos are really helpful. And what is insane is we actually ended up knowing some of the same people. And I'm from Ohio. He's from Iowa. And oh, wow. So a lot we, of people get those two confused, but they're different. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> same, with, same with Idaho, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. gosh. So we <laughs> Idaho, up, get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> ended up knowing some of the same people, and um, that just sparked communication between us because Kyle was like, I wasn't trying to use my YouTube just to talk to everybody. Yeah. So I'm just like, hey, your video is really helpful. And he was kind of being short with me and just like, yep, that's what they're for. <laughs> <laughs> so we had some common um, people and then we just started talking more after that and we both have a passion for travel so that was a topic of a lot of our conversations and we became really good friends for about six months and then we started dating but i was in florida when she messaged me then i went home to iowa for vacation before i flew to japan which where i was going to be stationed right so when we started talking i was in florida still hadn't met I flew to Japan, still hadn't met. We talked for six months. We were now 7,000 miles away from each other. And that's when we started our relationship. We decided to start dating before we had met. Wow. So this was in December of 2013. Oh my gosh. And who needs Tinder phone, when you have YouTube? Yeah. yeah. Okay, but Tinder, Tinder's not around at that point, right? <laughs> Uh, like this is like traditional no, no, like Tinder was around. Okay, oh, I, I have no of, idea. I'm sure all the, of it. a lot of the guys I was with were using Tinder oh, okay. to, meet, to meet local <laughs> local girls. He's like, yes, I yeah. did hear of the Tinder at that time. I created yes. an, an app and then I was just like, because I wanted to meet locals to go like explore. Okay. I wasn't actually trying to like date anybody. 
And so I was trying what to- What every guy says then, about being on Tinder. No, no, no. So I created it and I literally <laughs> like got on it and I was like, this is so stupid. Cause like somebody would message me and it was like, obviously for the reason people use Tinder right, or Tinder. Right. And I was just like, no, like I'm trying to meet somebody uh, to hang out with, like to show me around the island. Because we lived in Okinawa, which is like the Hawaii of Japan. Yeah. It's out in the Pacific. It's a tiny little island. Yeah. It's one third the size of LA. It's so an island. Kyle wow. was there. Super small. We started dating. Three months later, I flew to Iowa to meet Kyle's family for two weeks. I was still in and, Japan. And he and was meet not Kyle? there. Nope. He was no, not there. I was still in Japan. I, went to, I flew to Iowa to meet his family before I had ever met him. So I stayed with them for two weeks. Just, what? And just me by myself as well. I can't even. I can't even. Okay. <laughs> this isn't even the half of it. Okay, keep going. But, <laughs> but I just, I can't imagine a day where I'm like, I'm going to go vet the family first and make sure. Well, it was Neither a lot could we, easier. but those were the cards it we were dealt with. It was a lot easier life, to so. fly yeah, to Iowa yeah. than to fly to Japan. So I figured, let me just meet. But the there family. was a lot of like video chatting at this point, right? Either at that point. Oh, video chatting every like, day. Okay, yes. okay, okay. So yeah. it wasn't. Like I mean, I know that that sounds stupid, like a stupid we had question. We talked but every day for the so, six months before we started Okay. Dating. First okay. of all, I could see him on YouTube, so I knew who he was. We would Skype, so I'm like, okay, this is the real guy. Mm -hmm. And then we would talk on the phone and yeah, We Skyped you know, in July Snapchat of 2013 of for the first time. Yeah. So when I was back home in Iowa. And that was like the first time you had Skyped, I think. That was my first Skype ever with yeah. you. Oh yes, my goodness. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. let's get to this meeting with the parents. <laughs> yes. So um, yeah, I flew and met his family. I met his mom picked me up at the airport and it was just amazing. We have such a great relationship. It was just like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in forever. Oh my goodness. So from the beginning, we loved each other. So that was awesome. Um, I met your entire family and you went to my brother's birthday party. Yeah, I went to your brother's surprise birthday party. So, <laughs> okay. surprise, I'm your brother's girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, when did you actually meet? Uh, so fast forward from there to May of 2014. So, three months after you met, or two months after you met my family, I flew to Ohio. I flew from Japan to Ohio. There's a direct her. flight, I'm sure. No, 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 no. <laughs> not, even, not even close. Not even close. It's, it's like twenty hours of travel. It's horrible. Yeah, I'm sure. So, met her at the airport on May twenty seventh, two thousand fourteen, and we had our first hug and our first kiss before we even spoke a single word in person together. Makes yeah, sense. right after you crossed Long that overdue. line at yep. the airport. And oh my gosh. then we did. You have a sign. I did not have a sign. Oh, come on. That's like 101 <laughs> military <laughs> stuff, isn't it? I, I, ran, I ran and jumped on him as soon as, so I did not have any yeah, no room for I a sign. I would have preferred that than no just like this big sign. sign getting in the way. And like, <laughs> that would have made it really Kiss awkward. me, you fool. Yeah. That's what I would have written yeah. on the sign. Okay, go ahead. So then we went to her house. We're there for two days. Flew to Iowa. Together and this time. My birthday's on May 30th, so three days after. Um, the day after my birthday, May 31st, I proposed to her. So when she met my family, they went ring shopping. Are you serious? Oh, so I like that part So we out. already wow. had the ring. I already had the ring bought. Wow. So got the ring from my mom when I got to Iowa. And then on the 31st of May, we uh, got engaged. At Four the days Dam after to we Dam, met for the first time. Uh, oh after the Dam to Dam gosh. race, we ran a 5K together. Nice, as you do. I she, threw up. She, after you she get got engaged. sick. Oh um, no, we ran She kept it telling together, me to leave her and I was like, I'm not going to leave And I threw you. up and we whole, weren't engaged yet. <laughs> the whole goal was to run the 5K oh together God. and be like, I'm a, I'm a runner. So, or it used to be at least. And so I used to run a lot. I was really no. good at running. She's not, but I wanted to run the race together because I wanted to show like, this is how for I want life to be. For better or for worse. Like, yeah. I wanted to show her that no matter what goes on, that we want to do stuff together in mm -hmm. life. Like mm -hmm. life is a race that we're going to go through together. She kept telling me to leave her and... I wouldn't. Because I was slow. And then she got sick and oh. threw up right before the end of the race. Don't we drink milk before yeah. you run a 5K. Milk OMG, a no. Yeah. Yeah. That's a terrible yeah. idea. So <laughs> we had about half a mile to go and I threw up everywhere. And I like then, how this podcast um, has turned into you throwing up. This is <laughs> really, no, but it's all good. It's all very good and interesting then stuff here. after the race, they have the race photos. So we go up there and I'm... That we're in line for our oh race photos gosh. and I'm like, all right, what pose are we gonna do? And he's just he was kind of being weird. And I'm just like, what pose are you gonna I don't I don't care? And I'm just like, okay, fine, we'll just we'll do a thumbs up. So we go up there, we do the thumbs up, and then I go to walk away 
And then he like pulls me back and I like turn around like, what? Oh, <laughs> you're proposing to me right here. Oh, so I wow. definitely did not expect that. And um, I wanted to do it at a point <laughs> when she wouldn't expect it because she was thinking it would be like more dressed up or so out to dinner or something. I wanted to do something different that where she wouldn't suspect it. Definitely didn't. And so I wanted to be more of a surprise because she already knew it was going to happen, just didn't know when. So oh basically, to I still that wanted up that is, surprise uh, factor. So we met. We got engaged four days later, five and days we got after that. legally married five days after that at the courthouse in Iowa. What? Yes. Okay. So my brother and my mom were witnesses. We got legally uh, married. <laughs> then, I think you're just speechless right now. <laughs> I, I'm like, my line of questioning is getting yeah. really interesting. Now. Go ahead. <laughs> this was four years ago. Um, so then we flew back to Ohio shortly after that spent a little more time with is your, your family. family like okay with this by the way mckenna like what what's going on with your okay we i'm sorry i just I have to stop the story no what this is going is on with your question. family very valid question you're like i've been dating this guy because you're from southern ohio so you might understand yeah i, yeah, okay. I, I kind of get the gist yes. yeah. like, like, so, my mom's from southern ohio and she was in the air force so it's kind of like this like weird like balance of both of you guys but okay so you're telling your family i've been dating somebody kind of and it's getting really serious for sure. And I went ring shopping with his family, but I haven't actually met him yet. And <laughs> now okay. we're engaged. By the way, we're married now. What's yes. like, oh, what in that's exactly how it went. What in the world? Okay. Mostly I would say my mom was more understanding than anybody else because she would always, you know, want to talk to me. Oh, what's happening? You know, we're talking to this guy, this and that. Um, I will say when... <laughs> she's like, tell me who you're dating. Yeah. And you're like, I'm when, engaged. And she's when, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> she, no, my mom knew everything before I, I it happened. I would talk to her mom a lot too. So When, when I was overseas, I talked to yeah. her mom Kyle and I talked so for a while. We were really good friends. And then my mom could tell that... I was starting to like him more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then moms are good like that. She's also thinking, uh oh, this guy's in the military. He's also in Japan. Mm. She'd be like, you should talk to this guy back home, yeah, you know? So yeah. she was trying to like push me to talk to people. And I think it's more for like a safety thing. And she didn't want my heart to get broken and all that. So, um, but then I'm like, you know what? I like Kyle. So um, I would talk to her about it. And when things would get serious, I would let her know. And then, um, he was in Japan and we were originally going to be like, okay, you do your two years there and then we'll get married after that. We'll see where I get stationed after that. And but then, then we were there. like, well, why not just get married and come to Japan? So that ended up being what happened. So my mom was pretty much there with me the whole way. Um, when we decided to get married, I, I'm like, hmm, I should probably tell my dad. So <laughs> yeah, I um, went, thing. went downstairs to tell dad and he just was kind of like, hmm, okay. Okay. He just didn't believe it, I think. Yeah. But I'm like, hey, well, at least I told him. So it has time to sink in. So when we start talking about it more, he understands like, oh, she really means it. Mm. Um, I actually asked her dad and he said, I don't want you guys to, but you guys will do what you want. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, that sounds about right. All right but also, I guess um, that's a blessing. <laughs> the, the whole time that we had been talking, Kyle would also talk on the phone to my parents and my siblings. And when we would Skype, they would come and say hi to him. So they were kind of getting to know him a little bit. Um, it was a very weird concept for everybody. But for the most part, my parents and siblings were all pretty accepting of it. And my extended family, aunts, uncles, cousins, all of that, everybody's just like, this is really weird. You don't know this guy. Mm. I'm like, well, you're not at home to see that we literally talk like all the time every day. Yeah. So my family was totally cool with it. Yeah. Especially yeah. after they met her. They didn't. Think yeah. Oh, well, of it, so. yeah. yeah. I mean, no offense. You married <laughs> up. But yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Like clear, clearly, I was more concerned about yeah. her family. Yeah. <laughs> Too funny. Oh, I'm just kidding. You guys are great. Okay, so okay, you've been married now for four years. Yes. yes. So good. Okay. <laughs> He's so, like, by actually, the way, that we, was last week. We, like, we let's let's let everyone married. know you've been married for four. And years. I was on leave for 18 days. I flew back to Japan for five months. So we got married, okay. and then we were apart for five months. So right. we. Yeah, I mean, been, that's military life. Like yes. you basically so signed up for we had that. Been potential. in a committed relationship, and in our whole <laughs> life, only spent 18 days around each other for a year. That's insane. And then I flew back to have our wedding ceremony where our families actually met in Ohio, in Southern Ohio, where we had our wedding ceremony mm -hmm. and had our ceremony, spent uh, Thanksgiving with her family. And then we went from there on December 1st, we flew to Japan together. And yeah. that's when she moved. Because in the military, all the paperwork takes forever. Sure. So if you get married, especially when you're overseas, 
it's a painstaking process. So we had the, all the paperwork done over that five months we were apart and then came back, spent like 22 days together and then she flew to Japan with me. And then we lived there for a year and a half together. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, cool. So but now you live in Vegas. Yes. Right? That's where we got stationed with the military. Okay. So we how were, long ago was that? 2016. Okay. July or August of 2016. And so this whole time, are you thinking um, my, my, I don't know how you phrase it, right? Like my contract is up or something mm -hmm. like that, right? My contract is up at this point. Like, were you already thinking that's going to be, that's going to be it. I'm going to be oh, done at that point. Yeah, for sure. Like a hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. And was, so, and that's just in now. In about 2015, I was decided I'm not staying in the military. You were ready. And I still had three years left of my contract. Yeah, so do you live there now because of the contract now, like just now coming to a close or? Well, we got stationed there with the military and we had already decided when we lived in Japan that wherever we get stationed, we're gonna buy a house. So we had been saving oh, okay. up, I wanted, wanted to buy a house. I wanted an investment property. Yeah. So. yeah. so we moved to Vegas, bought a house, but we are in love with it. We yeah. love Vegas, Vegas is home now. It's the first place, first city in America I've ever been to that feels like home. Yeah. So I know I knew I never wanted to live in Iowa. I love yeah. that you guys so have up. this take on Vegas because my husband and I got married in Vegas in 2017. How romantic! And it was so <laughs> it was romantic. I mean, we did have to let did you people do the know. little white. Wedding no, chapel? I know we okay, had to. Yeah, that's, that's, so so that's that was what I was, what I was gonna say. We had to convince so many people. Like, guys, Elvis isn't marrying us. Okay, you do have to dress up. Okay, it's a real wedding. <laughs> it's a real wedding. Um, no, that was definitely an obstacle with getting married in Vegas, but I love it there. I do. I think there's a lot of takes on that city that could be super negative or super positive. Yes, and I, for sure. I just have super positive. I know that there's probably some negative things that happen just like everywhere else. Yeah. But um, I'm not much of a gambler. My husband's not much of a gambler. Like we love to go to shows. We love to have some of the best food in the world. And Vegas is a great place to do that. But oh, I sure. would agree that it's also a flourishing neighborhood, yeah. Yeah. even more than a it's it's more stop. of a community than people think because the strip so is such a small There's so much nature around too. Portion. And a lot of people don't think that because yeah. it's in the desert. Yeah, and you have Valley of Fire an hour away. You have Red Rock. Mount Charleston. Everything is all right there. The mountains surround the valley. So when we went to Denver on this road trip, actually, I was surprised that in Denver, the mountains were like non-existent to me because yeah. I'm used to what Vegas has to offer. And nobody ever talks about the mountains in Vegas. Mm -hmm. But that's what I imagined Denver would look like. Right. And then we went to Denver and I was just like, no, Vegas is where yeah. it's at. Yeah. Like, yeah. Vegas is beautiful. Yeah. So. Okay. So you live in Vegas. You own a home there, but you wanted to go on this big road trip, probably because you guys are thinking of having kids, right? Oh. And knock out some of this travel. If it were up to me, I'm we would have had kids two years ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but You mean um, four years ago. <laughs> When we, when we first got married, Kyle asked me and says, what do you want out of life? I'm like, well, I want to travel and I want to be a mom. And he's like, well, what if we travel first mm -hmm. and then have kids? I'm like, wow, that's such a great And then we can idea. continue to travel, but with the kids. Sold. Yeah. So with this road trip, I think to kind of, if it seems like we've gone off on crazy tangents, I'm sure we have, to tie it all together, we have been making YouTube videos this whole time. Our first YouTube video for our channel, Got Love, was recorded on our wedding ceremony day as we were walking out of the church after we got married. That's so it literally starts from the beginning. Yeah. And we have recorded our life as a military couple. We lived in Japan. We would explore the island of Okinawa. We would travel Asia a little bit. We moved to Las Vegas. We traveled the western part of the United States because we never had before and mm -hmm. that's been really amazing and we don't have as much freedom in the military with travel because you have to stay within a certain range so we always wanted to go out and do more we just couldn't mm -hmm. so when he finished his six-year enlistment we're like we're gonna go off and travel as much as we can that's so awesome. that's uh we've we've been planning it for over a year before you got out of the, the military. actual we had before we even left, we had every city that we knew we were going to in the next six months and all these lists of things to do in all these cities. And it took us almost a year to plan that. People to meet. But we <laughs> had. That's how uh, you're on that list. Wow. I'm pretty sure you are on that list. She of, really she is. Yeah. 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 Of people we knew like certain creators that were in certain cities. Oh, that's like awesome. Amy's in so. Columbus and uh, we're going to be there. So. Wow. Okay. That's really cool. One last thing to tie into this road trip before I start asking some legit like detail therapy questions. Okay. <laughs> you are hockey fans. 
Yes. So new hockey fans. Vegas has a brand new professional hockey team. Yes. It's the first so, pro sports team Vegas has had. First pro sports team. And we own a house there and we love Vegas and we want to make it a long term. I love that because so you're 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 not only like helping the brand of Vegas as a home, but also yeah. for the pro hockey team, yes. which is awesome. So are you following the hockey team on this trip? Is that a part of this? It's it's a it kind of goes into it. So what happened is first of all, we lived in Vegas before they had a hockey team. So then when they got the hockey team, it's kind of like a hometown pride thing. It's like mm. this is our team. I also grew up in well, you Iowa. You have to support them if you want them to stay. I grew up yeah. in Iowa. Yeah. Iowa has zero pro sports. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Yeah. No, to I, live in a city that finally in my life at 27 years old, I have a place that I live, have a team. And Ohio has a hockey team, but my family has never been a hockey family, so I I didn't grow up watching hockey or anything. I grew up watching USHL hockey, which yeah. is 17 to 20 year olds. So basically, play, mm -hmm. Vegas has a new hockey team, the Vegas Golden Knights. This is their second year, and we absolutely love going to the games. Uh, T-Mobile Arena atmosphere is amazing, and we have gone to every home game this year. And we, that we were home for. Yes, that we were home for. And then we had planned out our road trip. Mm -hmm. And was it like the day after we finalized our road trip, they dropped their schedule? It was like the same week. And we were like, we were let's see. Like, All right, we see. got everything figured out. What cities are going to on what days? Yeah, yeah. So we're like, let's see what games match up with where we're going to be. Nice. And let's see if we can go to any. So we have five for sure, which now has turned into eight because we're flying to New York tomorrow because there's two games in New York and one in New Jersey within a couple days. So They're we're doing like a quick flight to New York. Airport. New York. So nice. Yeah. We're going to be right there. And then we're coming awesome. back to Columbus for the game next here. week. Yeah. Cool. Okay, because I was like, there's a lot of the Vegas hockey team on your channel. <laughs> like in, uh, the trailer specifically, I was yeah. like, this is this seems important. So I just want to make sure yeah. to bring that up. I love that. I think that's so fun because it's not just then um, just a trip that you planned, but there's some like pillar events that happen, such yeah. memorable well, moments. The team is also a huge community builder for for the city because of October 1st last year. Yes. And all the tragedy yes. that's happened in that city and the city never having like a community feel. It's always just been tourism mm -hmm. it's always been gambling and, and so there were when, probably when a, a lot of locals hits, at that particular yeah. um terrible yeah. event yeah. too that was and so, so when cool. a lot of like when the recession hit in 2007 2008 the yeah. market there collapsed because people stopped going on vacation and vegas didn't have a community mm -hmm. that was thriving or building it up so the economy doesn't really sustain well during a recession but the fact that now they have a team and other things that are going to keep people there beyond just like the jobs of the industry mm -hmm. that are there, creating other community reasons that people actually want to live there is a really cool concept. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's been a cool part is seeing a city that's only looked at as tourism, having that group yeah. together beyond just tourism. Yeah. So Definitely. that's something why I think it's a part of our But I think too. just to clarify, we are not a hockey channel. We are a no. traveling yeah. couple who yes. enjoys going to hockey games and sporting events and just seeing the world. No, I like it. it. So we've been to an NBA game on this trip. We've been to nature. NFL game. We've been to college football. Yeah. We've been to several sporting events on this That's trip, cool. regardless of We just hockey. like yeah. showing everybody experiences all over the world. It's great. And what I love about it is that I feel like I, um, I, I'm, I could do a better job of this a lot of the time, but <clears throat> I'm a total advocate of my city. I love my city. I feel so grateful and like excited about the fact that, you know, our roots are here right now and our, our employees thought enough of Columbus that they decided to move here. Everybody's from out of town. So, I like that you're kind of carrying the Vegas flag as your home yeah. and because um, I just connect with that so much, which is great. But I, I want to talk about this whole like road trip, young married <laughs> couple thing because it is a lot. I mean, a Vincenzo, yes. my husband is from Connecticut and we used to drive to Connecticut sometimes and we do not do that anymore because being <laughs> in the car together for extended periods of time is not something I enjoy. So I would like to hear. <laughs> wow, we get along all of the time. <laughs> yeah, we've never fought at all. Not one time. Okay, what what are you driving, first of all? We need to get the lay of the <laughs> land. Like, how much space is there okay. and this podcast what's is gonna going be like, on? These people's lives is just a mess. Insane. So let's, That's let's what I'm say hoping. this. Do you want to start or do you want me to start? Uh, sure, I can. So we have a 2015 Toyota Corolla. That is what we bought when we moved to Vegas in 2016. We were planning on doing this U.S. road trip in this Corolla. Started our road trip, 
in the Corolla, made it to Denver, met a guy through another YouTuber that we know, Jax Austin, he's lived in a bus for two years, super awesome guy. We saw that he was in Denver, so we reached out to him, saw if we could stay with him, and he said he was staying at a friend's house, but he'll ask. Asked his friend, his friend said we could stay there. His friend was out of town. We stayed there for two days, then his friend came back, really liked us. Yeah, we told him our story about traveling in our car. Super awesome guy, his wife and him are amazing. And he said, I have this Suburban that's gonna be sitting here until next April or May anyways, so would you guys wanna take that and leave your car here? And he's like, we weren't gonna use the Suburban, so they're not using our car either right now, it's just parked at their house. And we're driving a Suburban now that when he told us we could have it, it was like, yeah, you could put a bed in the back and everything. So we well, went the first to, time he said it, we're kind of like, ha ha, like that would be so cool. Yeah, we're like, it's not really gonna happen. It'll be a funny story. Yeah. But the next day, we realized that it he was happen. like, oh yeah, I've decided you are taking mine to suburban because I want you to have four wheel drive and I want you to have more room to sleep if you need to sleep in your car again, which we'll get to that later. Yeah. Um, and that's how it happened. So we went to Home Depot that day and Kyle built a bed frame in the back of the Suburban in one day. And we have a eight inch memory foam mattress in the back of our Suburban. We got off of Amazon and I had to cut seven inches off of it because it was too long. It's a full size mattress, um, but we cut seven inches off. So it's basically the length of me, but that's the length it needed to be to fit in the back. (laughs) So we kept the middle (laughs) seats in the Suburban so we can still fit five people in the Suburban with all of our stuff. Yep. We have the front seats. The so back if we need to seat, drive and, and pick the people when up. the mattress is not out, no, no the mattress the ma- is in. Okay, mattress, mattress is out all, all the time. Your things you can still have five people. Oh, in mattress your and there's storage underneath right. the mattress. Bed. I'm sorry, mattress yeah. laid out. Yeah, all of your things underneath that because it's a frame. Five so people still fit in the car. You yes. can drive. Correct. We might have to test this theory after. Yeah, the you. Yeah, you'll yeah. have to come check it out. Wow, that's um, a lot. We were hoping to work with hotels, Airbnb, you know, different places to stay because we're like, okay, we're going on a road trip. We need a place to stay. The first day of our road trip, we were staying with a friend in St. George, Utah, and Kyle's like, what if we could see how long we could go without paying for a place to stay? So basically, friends and family. Or sleep in the car. Sure. Friends, family, and then we have some other ways like couch surfing or something like that, but we've also reached out to people and just like straight up ask them when we meet people. So we've had some interesting places to sleep along the way. We stayed at a random pizza restaurant in the middle of nowhere, Utah. We were driving. We inflated our air mattress in the store. Oh, we have an air mattress. You have an air mattress too? Yeah. Yeah, it's in. So we're we're driving. So in case we need somewhere to stay. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. You can't pull out the the car mattress that goes in the car. Yeah. 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 So we were driving. We were both tired. It was like 830, middle of nowhere. There's this random pizza restaurant that was still open. We go and like. We go inside and order pizza and then Kyle explains our story to her and, and was like, do you have a place that we could put our mattress or know anyone that might? This town doesn't even have a population of 300. Okay. Okay. It's that small. makes sense. Kushner, <laughs> Utah. Yep. <laughs> so she's like, well, hold on. Let me call some people. And then about 30 minutes later, she comes out and she's like, hey, I talked to the owner and she said, you can stay here. And we're like, wait, wait. We were just like thinking of somebody's living room here. And she's like, yeah, you just put your air mattress right there. So Lock the door when I leave. And then lock it when you leave in the morning. So we stayed in a pizza restaurant. The next day, we headed to Moab, Utah. And um, this is, I feel like we'll get into more of like the detail therapy stuff uh, with us not being on top of everything in a little bit. But we were in Moab, Utah. We were trying to like reach out to all these like hotels and stuff. Literally the day we're trying to find a place to stay. Yeah. It was a weekend. So no managers so, were so there. So my last day in the Air Force was on a Friday and that next Monday we started our six month road trip. So okay. I haven't taken a break at all. We didn't really have yeah. time. So the whole time we planned this road trip, I was working full time in the Air Force too. So wow. it's been Wow. We've kind of been behind, but we're <laughs> yeah. I'm we're, very much like if you don't just do up. it, it's not gonna happen. Exactly. So just do it. So. so yeah, so we're in Moab, Utah trying to reach out all these people. We sat in our car for like five hours, like on the phone, on the computer, all of that, sitting outside of a coffee shop, getting their Wi Fi. Yeah. And basically nothing worked out and we slept in our Corolla that night on the side street in Moab, Utah. And then we had actually had dinner that night and asked our waiter, because he seemed pretty cool. It seemed like he was someone who would understand our story. And we're like, hey, do you have a place for us to stay? And he was staying in an RV with his fiance at his sister's house at the time. So he's like, I don't have anywhere for you to stay, but you could borrow my tent. So the next day we hit him up again and was like, 
still got that tent. Can we borrow it? So we went and borrowed our waiter's tent. <laughs> oh, my God. Stayed at a campground. We picked it up from him at like 1130 at night. Yeah. Wow. Because he got off work. So then we drove to his house to pick up the tent. Yeah. So we stayed um, BLM land, which is free place to camp and set up our tent at like midnight. <sighs> and we actually have a plug in in our car. So our air mattress, you have to like plug it in. So it's midnight and we're like, Zzz! and we're like, oh sorry, gosh, everybody. That's so funny. It okay. Was, it, was it was 40, 40 degrees, degrees that night. Yeah. And we don't, we don't have sleeping bags either. We have like why? Four, we because the Are whole you trying point of this to kill her? yeah and, and the whole point of this trip was we're gonna take what we have yeah right to show people that you don't need to have the most fancy stuff you don't need to invest all this money to go I on feel a road like trip. Sleeping bags are like a bare minimum. We are still alive and we are on day fifty something. <laughs> so that's so all I'm gonna say. You need to put is, the foot down on this, okay? And, <laughs> so, and when we sleep in the car, when it's thirty or twenty degrees out, it's amazing in there. But I think yes. like yes. The we also overall, ask a lot of people. Yes, and... it, that is that's the overall <laughs> takeaway yeah. is that you guys are so unafraid to ask for help. No, we're help. still afraid. Like, <laughs> we just yes, I understand. To be uh, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah. Like you, you are sh just trying everything. Yeah. yeah, you are trying everything. Yeah, instead of just let's go pay for a hotel. Yes, let's use hotel tonight. Like mm -hmm. you know, the, which I actually tried to reach out to them. Take it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're like, oh, yes, use the app. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's a lot, but we need to get back to the space that is the car that you are in a lot. Yeah, it's very close quarters. Like, what's the longest that you've driven together? Eleven hours. Eleven hours. Like that's it's supposed a to be a five-hour drive from Moab to Denver, and we got caught in a snowstorm oh. going through Vail and everything. That yeah. couldn't have caused any fighting whatsoever. Actually, that was still in our that was in our Corolla too, yeah. so it's not four wheel drive. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Okay, so how are you guys doing in the car together? Like, let's be real. We don't talk. Okay, I like this. One Keep person going. edits, the other person drives. Ah, yes. okay. How yeah. are you powering your laptop? We, I don't, I would not know what to call it because I'm not a, a super techie person. It's just a like plug you, in a plug the, into the yeah, car, like that, adapter thing, right? Yes. Outlet, yeah. or the cigarette outlet. And where do you upload? Has little plugs. Where do where do you? I don't even know what it's called. Listen, husband. husband. <laughs> Thank you for producing the show today, but <laughs> I'm not interviewing you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Wi-Fi. How are you uploading? You guys are uploading every single. I'm sorry, every other day yes. on your YouTube channel. This process um, of your road trip. Are you are you documenting every single day? Or are you recording every other day? We pretty much document every single day. Okay. There has been a few days where we don't record if we're like, you know, we're just going to sit and edit and work all day. So let's not record yeah, that. So it kind of gives us a mm -hmm. little bit of a break and that's one more video we don't have to edit. So whenever we get the chance, so example, when we're in the car, one person drives, one person edits. Or when we get to someone's house and we're like, we're just going to stay here and edit today. And we try to get ahead on videos. Mm -hmm. So we get as many as we can done and then we schedule them out. Okay. When we so do I have, have we have four Great. videos scheduled right now for the next eight days. Okay. So that's we good. Kind so you're of, usually about a week ahead. When we have Wi-Fi, we're like, uh, can we? Yeah. Okay. So you guys aren't ever like freaking out about Wi-Fi because you're about a week ahead. No, we were the first half of the trip. Yeah. Like the first. Well, because you have to kind of like get yeah, ahead. You have yeah. To, you have to point. start yeah. it. Yeah. Well, because like, so we were trying to keep up and only have like a week delay between where we were and what videos we're posting, we realized very quickly that that is not a possible task right. for us, especially when we do everything with our business ourselves. Right. Like, we don't have a team. We don't have anybody. So we're trying to balance travel, sleep, living out of our car, where we're going to sleep that day, plus edit and do social media, everything. It's been crazy. So, okay. So amongst all of this, you're self-funding the trip. You're not sponsored. Yes. I mean, you definitely right. have some revenue of that from, from creating because there's I have yeah. invested programs. and saved. Like I'm the type of person where if money is in my checking account, I'm probably going to spend it. Yeah. So the way to combat that is to not have it in put the it into different <laughs> savings and put it into different investments. Smart. So then I'm like, well, I don't want to pull that out of that investment or out of this savings thing. So then I just force myself to not spend it and then it just continues to grow. So that's how. What are you much. using to invest right now? Like, are you using any of these like apps or or so is it all like I have fancy? stocks. I have cryptocurrency. I have Acorns, which is one of the apps that we use. What does Acorns do? So it's a investment app, but it takes it rounds up your change. So whenever you spend with your debit card or credit card, it just takes the extra change. Basically, if you were to pay cash and they give you change and you throw it in a jar when you get home. Right. It's the same thing, but digitally. So it does it with your debit or credit mm. card. So everything that you spend is rounded up to the whole dollar. 
and then they invest that for you. Oh, interesting. I'm using an app right now that it does round up, but it goes into a savings account. So it sounds like that would be better used yes. to invest. That's super smart. But yes. other than that, th you guys are talking about like savings. Yeah. Are you doing, what are you working on on the road that's able to like keep you guys going? You got to pump so gas. We, I mean, we get paid through our YouTube videos. Obviously, so I have a YouTube channel that has over 154,000 mm -hmm. subscribers. Mm -hmm. That's what the is one that, that called? Kyle got. Mm -hmm. So that's what McKenna found me from. And when she found me back and in 2013, your, it's about Air Force information. So I didn't even have a thousand subscribers when she found me. Wow. And you're so an then, OG, OG in yeah. the military yeah. blogging. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what's way, what's way your back. nickname? Oh, what? oh, the old, oh, the old. Like grandfather thing. or something. Yeah. It starts with old. The old Sounds man grandfather right. of <laughs> military <laughs> bloggers or something. That's Somebody dubbed Rock, you that. Rocky Rockfit had called me that. Yeah. That's awesome. But I, before our road trip, we already knew we were going to do this. Yes. Well over a year before we did So you did some did planning. Yeah. So Financial. Lots we would budget our money and we had even, we saved up all of our gas money for what it would have been if we were in our Toyota Corolla the entire time. So we had saved that up. Plus um, we with YouTube AdSense and then we have some merch that we sell, which a, a lot of income doesn't come from that, but you know, it's a little bit. You have to sell a lot of merch yeah. to make money off And then we merch. also have Patreon as well. Okay, yeah. so how much planning is going into this trip? Okay, so I'm gonna start from like basics. Do you guys have a regular morning routine to keep yourselves kind of healthy on this trip? Because all this traveling can really <laughs> affect your mindset. It can affect your body. What is what is your day like? Like, is there a consistent th thread at all? So you, um, I was embarrassed for you to ask us this question. Yes, I figured. I saw it on your face <laughs> just now. Yeah. Um, I just won't talk. Basically, no. <laughs> but we're trying to work on it. I wrote down a schedule yesterday of... I'm gonna start waking up by at least 8 a.m. because it's hard for us on this road trip because every day is a different schedule. There's so many different things happening. So we definitely didn't get up at 8 a.m. Um, there hasn't been anything with our food lately that we have been trying to do to be healthy. We're more of like, where can we get the best deals? Mm -hmm. We wanted to run as we're traveling, but it's been so cold. Yeah, it's cold. So we're like, once it gets warmer, we're gonna start running. So, oh my life, gosh, you guys should like hit up like LA mess, Fitness or something and ask them for a like sponsored membership or something. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Well, we had all also looked into that because if you have a membership, that's a place to shower wherever you park yeah, your car. Yeah, definitely. So. Definitely. Yeah. So yeah, with, with eating healthy, we actually sat down on day 35 of this road trip. To read that. And I kind of was editing videos and I was sitting there and I was like, man, we can do so much better on this trip. And I was like, if we just keep going on this trip, we don't take time to assess what we've already done. It's not going to get better. We don't change anything. So I wrote down questions of what do we, what have been the best parts of this trip? What's been the worst parts? What are we spending money on? What do we need to not spend money on? What do we want to do more of? I wrote all my answers on a doc and then I blacked out my answers, then let her answer them. So oh, we, I love she, couldn't, this she, couldn't, she couldn't see my answers. Okay. Then I went through and took off the, the black highlight so you could see everything on the dock. And we went through and read them all together. And surprisingly enough, in our marriage, we have lots of differences. But on this road trip, <laughs> the favorite things between us were pretty much identical. That's awesome. Our favorite experience. That's important because it just means that you're, you're, you guys are aligned in why mm -hmm. you're doing this, which is so important. And so our favorite parts of the road trip Pretty much we wrote down almost word for word the same stuff. Our least favorite things of the road trip, we wrote down pretty similar things. And then... What were they? What were the least favorite? I, I can pull it up right pull now. Pull it up. Actually. <laughs> take well, your, take your time. I would say with looking at the things that we both love to do, none of it included eating or restaurants because... Whenever we go somewhere, we love asking our subscribers for suggestions of things to do. And everyone's always like, food, 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 food. Yeah. But that's where a lot of the money comes from. Yeah. That was not one of the things on our Yeah. So neither of, of us right. had well, written that's it down. So we're like, well, that's something that we can take off. That's what we're spending the most money on. Because we're, we're not, not paying for lodging. Yeah. It's yeah. like if we're so. not working with a company to go and like eat for free and record their food, then we're not gonna pay to eat there unless it's literally like all right we need something right now where's right. the mcdonald's coupon at? right so right. that's a, a big expense that we could take off that we both agreed on do you want me to read through this stuff real fast i want to hear a few of the the big ones like the least our favorites our least, least favorite? favorites like things that you need to work all on right. what have been the worst parts of this road trip yes i said fighting 
uh, not getting videos done, not getting mm-hmm. social posts done, not making money, uh, not exercising and being cold. And then McKenna said, being cold, cluttered car, last minute meetups, not planning with companies prior to getting to the city and not having a sponsor. Yeah. So what did you learn from that list? Like that your biggest priorities are going we forward? We need to work more. Yeah. We were, work more. We need to set we, aside more time to work. Because up to that point, mm. it was just like adventure all day, all mm. day. And then we weren't spending time editing videos. And right now, that's pretty much the only way we're making money is right. if we're putting videos out through AdSense, which is still not even, most people don't make a ton of money through their AdSense. They make it through other things such as brand deals sure. And, sure. and other partnerships. So we basically just come to the same conundrum that everyone else does, which is work-life balance. Mm-hmm. So is yeah. there is there a way to calendar block your way to success here, right? Like this is adventure time. This is, is figure out where we we're don't staying. we really have a set schedule for our Which, adventures. <laughs> I think it is. You even have a video on calendar block. I sure do. Link in the show notes. <laughs> um, we just literally need to take the time to sit down and just reevaluate our schedule and plan more down days, which we had originally done, but then life just happens and things come yeah. up and, and now we're going to new york for five days which wasn't part of the original plan and yeah so we which is fine like you want to be able to have and like the spontaneity of this event want. new york pops up and then you're still coming back to columbus to get to that other game mm-hmm. that i i love that but you know what i in particular do like let's just say you were asking my advice i don't know if you are but i'm just gonna say what's your advice, I'm my, always asking <laughs> your advice. my thought would be you know putting those big pillar events that you guys clearly know when the games are you know where um the important things you want to do in certain cities are and you can start to plan around them because to me the beauty of calendar blocking and google calendar in particular is just dragging and dropping when things change and then filling the white space with the other stuff that's super important and making sure it's there or if it's like we need to have an editing day every other day Mm -hmm. put it on the calendar and then if it needs to get moved around because of some spontaneity awesome and then i also think if i were in your situation because no offense, but I would never want to be in your situation where I didn't know where I was going to sleep on a regular basis. <laughs> but if I was, I would be trying to do that in batches too, right? Yes. Like it, I know it's so hard because you're just trying to get people to reply to you or mm-hmm. or find out who's willing to like put up the space. But I would spend X number amount of hours like what companies can we reach out to? What people yep. do we know? Where's the family? You know, and you know, one hundred percent agree down. with you on that. We that's kind of what this that doc that we filled out kind of led I to think that's was, a great first step yeah. because you guys really figure out where you both are in your thought process and then we can where you're happy what do we actually want to spend money on yeah. when we're yeah. when we're fronting this trip out of our own pockets it's very important to yeah. know where your money's going yeah. and if it's meaningful what you're spending your money on so totally. at the beginning of our trip just like we mentioned um writing your name down like what influencers do we know in this area we also would be like do we have friends or family in this area if not then as we're traveling we kind of post on social and ask uh we do look into people before we just stay at random people's sure, houses yeah yeah um, we don't need you on like nightline okay yeah. <laughs> but then <laughs> We do need to take more time, which I actually just wrote this down yesterday that every day I want to spend a little bit of time on emails because I got so behind on emails and nobody likes having a full inbox. It's the worst. Do you use a tool to organize your inbox? I do not. I recommend Samebox. Oh. Samebox is great. If you're willing to pay for it, I mean, we should reach out to Samebox and be like, give these guys some Samebox because (laughs) what it does for me is it gets all of this sort of like junkier stuff in a place where you can get to the priority emails first. But I still check my junkier emails because I love to shop. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not allowed to love to shop. Yeah, right but now. that's just me. Sorry. No, that, you can live vicariously through me. Yes, I will. <laughs> so yeah, emails. I want to spend a little bit of time on emails every mm-hmm. day. Um, LinkedIn. I really love LinkedIn for connecting with people that we do want to work with. It helped us a lot when we were in Las Vegas. Awesome. And we just haven't spent the time on it since we've been traveling. So I'm kind of like writing these things down. Like, what do I want to spend a little bit of time on each day so we can get ahead for? Okay, let me this day work on New York Mm -hmm. and then the next day we'll work on you know Florida you know wherever we're going to be it's so good to know that like LinkedIn is helping you in that respect you love LinkedIn we did an episode episode four with Brittany Crystal on LinkedIn and there's a huge opportunity with LinkedIn video like I could see you guys just posting a video on LinkedIn just saying just the two of you like hey we're gonna be in New York next week like Mm -hmm. who's got a couch like like that kind of thing because video is just so hot yeah right now love that Um, we actually used it t- to kind of get in front of the Vegas Golden Knights people a little bit. Did it work? 
Yeah, it did. What happened? So the chief marketing officer had seen that video and we've kind of been in touch a little since then and he actually ended up helping us get tickets to one of the home games awesome. one time too so we'll try to balance that not spam people but also right. let them know you're serious yeah but, but also not, like, like provide value and yeah. let them know like i'm not just using you so we would like message them maybe like a week or two before we'd like post a video and then tag them in the video but it's not like every day right you're like all right i hate these people right. because yeah. they won't stop like posting stuff yes, to me. Yeah. The excessive so tagging. you you have to get their attention, but also not annoy at the same time. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we focus a lot on LinkedIn because I feel like that's a place where people can get annoyed really fast because it's yeah. a very professional market. Right. So if you're spamming, it will come off yeah, like it's that. Not gonna work. Okay. Well, I went to my Twitter and I wanted to know what everybody else wanted to know about you guys and your road tripping. Um, Lori Burkett 17 asked, who gets to pick the music on road trips? Um, well, I don't even know the last time we've listened to music in the car. Because you guys tend to be quiet or you listen, do you ever listen to podcasts? Do you ever listen to audiobooks? Do you guys ever? One person edits. So One person edits. So you mostly, have to have all the audio. I left. would say the driver picks because when we very first started the mm -hmm. trip, we would listen to music and the driver gets to pick because the driver has one to of drive. us is mm -hmm. always in the passenger seat yeah. with headphones on editing. But then during the trip, we have decided, hey, let's edit without headphones because we always edit. Well, I, I don't want to say that one yet. Um, we listen without <laughs> headphones. So then like, the driver can also put on put input on the video. Yeah. So if one person's editing and then the driver might be like, hey, add this. Like, just like, hearing that, this was, part. that was redundant and cut that piece yeah. out or something. The other person might so have missed it when like they were playing it. We're editing through. together right. as we're driving. Did but that the one work? Person's just audio editing. Because that's tough the, sometimes to edit video without listening via headphones because audio can tend to be a little very bit of true. A variable sometimes. Very true. Um, for the most part, it's worked pretty we well. Have, I've never had an issue. There it. has really? been a few times where it's been loud outside the car where I'm just like, I'm not going to go through this part right now because it's... Because you wouldn't yeah. be able to do it truly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. JCS said, how do you do most of your uploading with inconsistent internet connection while traveling and who does most of the editing? We... We'll just find Wi-Fi at a coffee shop if need be, and we don't have a place to stay. And we'll sit there for two hours while we wait. <laughs> <laughs> because it doesn't have fast internet like we do at home. Do you try to hit Starbucks? Because I feel like their Google Wi-Fi is pretty decent. Have we, I don't even think we've uh -uh. done a Starbucks yet. We tried to in Moab, but then it was inside of a grocery store. And so but yeah, we like, hit up oh. another coffee shop. So usually any coffee shop has free Wi-Fi. And then we've been staying with people along the way. So usually everyone has internet, yeah. some faster than others. And then with who does most of the editing? Uh, we're probably 50-50. So McKenna will trim a lot. So she'll go through and we'll have like an hour just or two hours of video ones. and just cut all mm -hmm. the pointless stuff that we yeah. recorded, all the extra recording. Basically get it trimmed down to a 20 minute video or 40 minute video. And then I'll go through and actually edit it. And then what usually happens is once I do that, then, well, the last like week or two, we've just been trying to knock them out. So yeah. I'll just go through and I'll finalize it and be done. But usually she'll trim, then I'll go through and I'll do my stuff and then I'll give it off to her and she'll go through it again and add whatever else she wants to make it better or sure. cut things out I love that, that I left. Yeah, so it's a team so, effort on yeah. pretty yeah. much every video. So we're pretty much like 50-50 on that. And then the inconsistency of uploading is we're so far behind with, with posting and editing that we can upload in bulk. So whenever we get to somebody's house. And so house, far behind, you just mean scheduled out. Like correct. you're you're so, behind in terms of your posting day. Like 20. 20 right now. Yeah, today's day 50. Okay. And today's and day 50 in real life. So we're going to have 30 you days. You got a good 30 days to edit that yeah, content. So every other we day. can edit videos 22 through 25 or 26 mm -hmm. and then schedule those out. Mm -hmm. And when we have good internet and then just keep editing videos. And if we don't have good internet, we know, okay, we don't have to upload right now because we can just keep working on editing and wait until we get to a place that has good internet and then upload again from there. Cool. Okay. So how much time do we have left? About four months, right? Is that about it? Yeah. Uh, on the trip? Yeah. Yeah. Like four we'll months. Be... What are some of the big places that you're going to be along the way in the next four months? New York. And then we're driving down the East Coast. So we're doing New York for New Year's. I know everybody's probably like, that's horrible. Shocker. Don't do it. <laughs> and we've been, we've heard horror stories and everybody says, it, and, but I'm, I'd rather do it do now. Do it. Do it than, now. Then when we yeah. have kids and then you're like, I you're definitely not, don't want to take my kids that. down yeah. there. Right. So, and I don't want to do it when I'm 50 or 60 because no. I just Nightmare. be like, I can't be around this anymore. So we'll do it while we're young. It can handle it. 
Then we're going to drive down the East Coast, probably do that really quick because we hate winter and we're ready to get out of it. So go straight down to Florida, take a few days to get down to Florida, stop at major places along the way, major cities on the East Coast, do pretty much the whole Florida loop, go out to the Keys and then come back up. Uh, we're also going to be going to Mexico on this trip oh, because yes. my cousin's getting married oh, in wow. early March and his soon to be wife is from Mexico, but they met in college in oh, New Mexico. Wow. So when so, we get to New New Orleans, we're going to be flying to Phoenix, Arizona, riding the bus to Mexico with the family and going to a wedding for a couple days, driving the bus back and flying back to Phoenix continue on our road trip so then after florida we're heading across the southern states back to nevada and we're going to be going to hit like major cities um, in, in texas yes, and a couple cities in texas. pretty much all the major cities along the the southern coast for the most part but if anybody would love to meet us along our road trip our social media is up to date as in like twitter and instagram so you guys yeah can... shout out your handles because i want everyone to tune in mine is at mckenna got m-a-k-e-n-n-a-g-o-t-t -T. and then mine is at kyle got youtube and it's yeah. the same on twitter and instagram yes. yes okay and if you heard your city and you have a couch or something <laughs> maybe let us know hit them <laughs> up because these are good people and i would love if somebody that is a fan of the show could support so That'd make awesome. sure you hit them up okay so we've got the handles you guys are on your way and i'm so excited for you guys to finish this trip like this is yes. pretty much the coolest story i think i've ever heard and in terms i of like, love that we get to add this memory of being on your podcast to our road trip i'm archive. i'm honored that i was you know what on the list my favorite video that you ever made was what's that the one where companies were sending you the adult color books yeah and you just were like, I don't know how I'm ever going to use these. So I'm just going to color and talk. <laughs> I and I was like, I was just like, that is the coolest thing ever. That was when everybody was like quitting YouTube yeah. at the time. So oh, I was like, I was having a commentary. I was, I was like, everyone's quitting Casey YouTube right now. So I'm going to color. Yeah, yeah. Casey took a break. Everybody was taking a break. And it's just like, okay, guys. And so I, I was just like, thought well, that, that was the coolest thing because you you were like, That's this isn't so even funny. a sponsored content. But you're just like, these companies sent me all this stuff. I don't even know when I have time to use it. So. I'm just going to do this and talk. I don't make videos about color books, so I'm just going to use them right now. Yeah, that hilarious. was kind of funny. I just thought Thank it was cool because you. you're just being like real and you're just like, I mean, company send me this and I don't even know how to I'm use it. I'm trying so hard. I mean, like, you know pretty well. You've How long have you been in the YouTube industry at this point? 2007 is when yeah, I, I mean, created my first 2007. Channel. Like, my first video publicly was 2009. I had a channel in 2008 yeah. that nobody knows about. Like, that... It, it, you get it and you've probably seen this influencer space change so much yeah. i think what we need now more than ever is the realness oh uh, yeah because so many people are using products and yeah. pretending like it's their favorite thing ever then they've had it for five minutes because they just I think opened that's a hard it out thing of a parcel with, us with sponsorships too is we don't want to work with a company that's not something that we actually believe, believe in. in yeah and it, it, to me, I could care less about money in the aspect of like, we live out of our car right now. You know, it's like, we're paying for this trip ourselves. We're not like, well, I'll only do this trip if somebody pays for it. It's like, I'm doing this trip regardless because yeah. we want to. Honestly, for but, us, it's really just all about the journey and our life can be a mess sometimes, but we're still making it happen. So that's just really cool. And that's kind of hard that. to find companies that are true that what you believe in to work yeah. with so yeah. it, it i don't want to just work with anybody I love that. but there's not a whole lot of companies we probably would be okay with working with in the, in the scheme of all the the brands that are out there but yeah shout out to triple a though because i feel like that would be legit we Ooh, we, we have triple a oh good good <laughs> yeah. okay good um we're not sponsored by them but if they want i to. feel you should be. that's <laughs> that was the point of that Okay, just to wrap this up in traditional detail therapy fashion, you guys can take turns on this. What does it mean to you to go after the life that you want? Oh, wow. You go first. All right. Uh, life's all about sacrifices. I say this all the time. And it's one of my biggest things. Short-term sacrifices equal long-term gains. That's something I just say to people. I've said it for a really long time. I don't believe anybody, like I picked it up from anyone. It's just the way I've lived my life is... With, if you want to have money, like people are like, how do you afford this trip? And it's like, well, I spent years saving and I forced myself to live without that money in the moment. So four years from now, I can live with that money. And it's the same thing with planning for a trip is I'm going to take time out of my day every day for a year to plan a, a six month road trip instead of wait till that trip. I'm, I've sacrificed all this time. And 
And I think that's one of the biggest things for me to live my life is it doesn't come with, I got to do everything I wanted to do. But I told myself, these are what in, are important to me and that's what I want to do and I'm going to do it. And it definitely means that you can't do everything you want, but you just have to tell yourself what you want to do. And, and to me, that's satisfying because I look back and there's even things I've spent time on that I'm like, it didn't really matter to me. Why did I spend time on that? But it's satisfying to know that when I do look back on certain things and know I sacrificed a lot of this time to do this and now it's something. So that's, that's my biggest thing is it's just like a dream come true, but it's been a lot of sacrifice. Honestly, for me, I think it's just a feeling of thankfulness. I feel like I want to say a lot of people from small towns, I don't feel like get out and, and do a whole lot. And it just makes my heart so happy to get to see so much more of the world. And honestly, with our YouTube channel, I think it's cool that maybe people who don't get out and do things, we can still show that to them. And also just showing people that, hey, if I did this, you can get out and do this too. McKenna, Kyle, thank you for being on the show. Thank you thank so you. much for having us. All right, let's catch some details from my chat with the Gots. First and foremost, love a good calendar blocking tip. I thought that they could really leverage calendar blocking to better their schedule throughout their time, mostly because they're trying to balance adventure, work, and outreach. So with all of the things that they have to do and all the things they want to do, just because they're on a road trip doesn't mean they can't schedule it for success. So check out that calendar blocking video that I have made in the past on my YouTube channel. Super helpful if you don't know what I'm talking about to help you be more more effective and realistic about how much time you have to get things done. Quiz your partner and compare answers to find out if you're on the same page. I loved this tip from Kyle and McKenna. What a great idea for them to just make sure that they were actually enjoying their road trip together and not only liking things that the other one didn't. You know, that would have been kind of weird and awkward. Like, oh, wow, where are we going to find common ground here? Clearly, they have some common ground. They're married. There's a reason they wanted to go on this trip. But being able to look at those answers and then demote all of the things that do not matter. I mean, maybe eating at restaurants isn't that sexy, but making sure to find healthy food so you're not letting your body go to crap on this whole trip is a discussion you need to have. So I thought anyone could take this advice. How can you you know, challenge or, or, or quiz your partner in some area of your lives, not the entirety of your lives, that might be a lot to approach them with, but maybe in your, um, in your dinner selections or in your refrigerator altogether, or your fitness activity, or how often you guys spend time for each other. Maybe you can create these quizzes to kind of see what your partner is thinking and how you can improve. I love it. Two separate quizzes, compare answers. You can't cheat. I just thought that was such a good tip. Another great one for your email inbox organization. I've always advocated for SaneBox. I think the GOTS can totally leverage SaneBox here, and you should too. They are not a sponsor, but I have been using them for years. I, it's come to a science at this point where instead of it being this novelty of, ooh, this thing's going to help me organize my inbox, it's a science now. Everything just goes where it goes, and I'm able to have inbox zero almost on a daily basis because the unimportant emails aren't going where they shouldn't be. My favorite tips from this episode really are to take a chance. Just take a chance on something that feels right in your gut and ask for help. This one I struggle with all the time. Can you imagine being in the GOT situation where they have to find a place to sleep sometimes where the truck doesn't work or they didn't maybe have that bed yet or maybe you, you know, think of that situation. Think how hard that might be and how scary it can be. Planning accordingly can help a lot in this situation, but just asking for help, asking for people you know to recommend certain things or to offer up their couch to you. I mean, that's a specific example for them, but how are you not asking for help in your life that would be a lot easier? I mean, I can think of an example today where I should have asked somebody for help sooner and I didn't, but when they reached out to me, I was like, yes, please help me with this. So, Think about how you can take more chances and ask for more help in your life because the two might go very much hand in hand. One little bonus detail here, 
if you have a couch you would be willing to offer the gods, hit them up on social media. I personally just would love to see this happen. I'm not pressuring anybody whatsoever. But if you happen to be on their trip, if you find out you're one of their cities, it could be a really fun way to connect. I met them. They are lovely people. And um, yeah. If you saw my YouTube video, you saw that I saw where they're sleeping in their truck, and I don't really approve. So <laughs> um, do them a favor, please. You can find all of their details for social and YouTube in the show notes. Of course, detailspodcast.com. Just go to the episodes page and look for The Gots. Got love, Kyle and McKenna. What an episode. A little bit different than usual, but it was so much fun to meet them and get this episode into your earbuds. And since you love things in your earbuds, I'd love to hear if you'd like some simple steps for living your best life every day. I'd like to send you a free audio training with the seven essential details for going after the life that you want. To receive this audiogram, subscribe to the podcast and take a screenshot to show you're subscribed. Email that screenshot to hello at detailspodcast.com with audiogram please in the subject line and we will get that right over to you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. If you'd like to discover even more actionable details, head over to Amy TV by typing the URL in your browser, youtube.com slash Amy TV, or search for Amy Landino in your YouTube app. Subscribe for good vibes, kiss the ones you love, and remember to go after the life that you want. Cheers. <laughs>